Hey everybody, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome to a video series where I showcase what I found to be the best in slot min-max build for one of the 12 Midnight Suns heroes. I will also give a quick review of all the hero abilities to show what other potential fun build options the hero may have, or reveal the thought process that ultimately led me to the one and only best choice to min-max said hero. Once we have given an overview of the hero, I will give a tier list rating in direct comparison to the other 12 heroes. We'll also mention what battle items and heroes synergize best with this build. This is a one of 12 part series. If you end up finding this video informative or helpful in any ways, please check the video description for a full playlist of my series for Midnight Suns. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get into today's hero. Today's hero, we are going to uncover the hidden potential of Nico Minoru. Nico's core design was intended to be that of a support hero, and her class fantasy revolves around the Staff of One. If you're unaware, in the Marvel Universe, Nico's Staff of One can only ever cast any one spell once. She, however, has found clever ways to work around this by using different languages and finding various ways to cast similar spells, but in different ways. And why is this important to this video, though? Because the developers had to find a way to incorporate this Marvel hero's philosophy slash rule into the hero's card plays. How can they achieve making each spell cast unique without ever casting the same spell twice? This is where they designed in the roulette mechanic. Basically, almost every card Nico draws, it has a chance to have one of several effects or alterations to the original spell. So you never really know what you're going to get. This certainly does make each of her spells unique and you rarely ever do end up playing the same spell twice in a singular mission. I just personally feel that this was the wrong approach because Nico in the Marvel Universe doesn't cast spells at random. She cast spells that are very specific and she does it with conviction. So the way I would have personally designed this mechanic, Nico should have been one of the only heroes in the game that had more card designs into her kit to choose from and you would only ever be able to equip one of each of them in your deck whereas other heroes you can take two of certain cards. And then anytime she used one of those spells that she only has one of in her deck it would play the exhaust effect, meaning you cannot play it again or draw it again in that same mission. This would also mean that she could only ever play a total of eight cards in a single mission. However, I think that's fine because you rarely ever do play eight cards for a single hero during a mission. This would then make the Staff of One more true to the original design and less of an RNG Gamba system. But that's just my opinion. I think that they really missed the mark on this hero's fantasy, and I'm a bit disappointed in the developer's choices here with this design, to say the least. This, however, doesn't mean she's a bad hero by any means, but it certainly does make her unreliable at most times. So the build I will be showcasing in today's video will focus more on trying to make her a bit more reliable. So talking a bit more about her tier list in relation to the other heroes, without mods, Nico feels like one of the worst heroes in the game by far, especially considering the RNG and unpredictability of her roulette mechanic as we just discussed which when rolled poorly costs you a card play for doing almost nothing or forces you to use a reroll to get rid of the card's bad roll. She's not great without mods unfortunately and for me she's getting low C tier. With mods her potential increases for sure but every other hero in the game is still far more powerful and reliable than Nico is. She will be the one and only sole remaining character below A tier once modded, placing her alone in the B tier, which is still pretty darn good. I digress though, there have been moments where the stars have aligned and Nico managed to duplicate and lower the cost of one of her own legendary abilities, Crack in the Sky, allowing me to play it twice in a row, clearing the entire map in one turn. And in moments like this, she feels S tier for sure. 
However, moments like that rely on perfect card draw through the support of other heroes like Doctor Strange or the use of battle items and praying that the RNG gods grant you the 33% chance to roll duplicate heroic on your double up card. So in other words, it's pretty darn rare when she ends up feeling S tier, but it is definitely possible. So we're gonna average it out and put her in the B tier because there's really a low chance of her taking control and doing amazing things because of this RNG system. Hence why I feel like it should have been designed with a different approach in mind. Before we start talking about her build, let's take a look at my hero profile. You can see that I brought her on 24 missions with my hunter and you can see I've used uh, a vast amount of her abilities. None of them are screaming overused. I, uh, tw Swarm has taken the lead with 28 uses. Overall, compared to the other heroes that I've featured in this series, she has definitely gotten a lot less played. You can see her champion level is only level eight in the top right hand corner. Her friendship level is only level 12, which is pretty high considering all things considered. I do play this game a lot, but of all the heroes, she's not getting a lot of time out there on the field with only 98 enemies KO'd, unfortunately. Let's uh, take a look at the hero's passive ability and another one, level 2, 33% chance to draw a card when a Nico card is played. This actually used to be when a Nico card is played and she's at full health. I think they just, like stealth updated this. Pretty sure that that's, that's the case. That's how I remember it being used, but it's pretty nice. 33% chance to draw a card. It's pretty nice. This is one of the better passives in the game. Now that it appears to be uh, updated, that it doesn't have the requirement of her being at full health. And I have seen this proc a lot. So I definitely like this passive quite a bit. Absolutely. One of the better passives in the game for sure. Uh, we normally talk about stats. So we can take a look at the stats on the right hand side. Obviously her health and offense is based off her champion level, which is quite low for me. So she's pretty much a, a glass cannon at this point. I wouldn't even consider her a cannon <laughs> in most cases, but sometimes she can be. There's not a lot that you really need here, crit chance caps at 50% crit damage caps at 75% and I do think you will get some value out of that however because there's so many other heroes that I prefer to play on the roster of 13 playable characters and potentially more with the four future DLCs she just doesn't get enough action for me to prioritize her crit chance and crit damage if you do however love the hero and love her kit and love her fantasy and just like her uh, I definitely focus on crit chance crit damage it's going to help you out a lot and then then my, my next focus is going to be power. In some builds and in some cases, she does have area of effect abilities and uh, they're kind of small-ish and they're going to need the help of power to make them slightly better, increasing that AoE radius. And she doesn't really have much knockbacks or anything like that, so you don't really have to worry about anything else. So in terms of stats, she, she can perform well as a support she can perform well as a hero as i mentioned she can have those s tier moments and that's with the need or use of any of her stats being upgraded at all so i think you can play her sufficiently without worrying about upgrading any of her stats at the training yard so let's get into my current build i have done various different builds with her and some of the footage you will see me using other cards before we show you my build i want to talk about those things real quickly like i have used witch's Storm, which I was talking about, you can increase the area of effect through her power. And I have put plus one mark on this, making her a bit more of a mark support, bringing in more of that support. So having two of these in your deck with mark does allow her to mark enemies. And because it's hitting multiple enemies multiple times, it can apply one, two, three applications of mark. And the best thing about Witch's Storm with mark, if the first hit hits the enemy, it will mark them. And if the last hit or the second hit kills them, you will get the card play refunded. So in many cases when this has plus one mark you can oftentimes play it for free i also really liked restore at one point i did get use out of this with uh certain builds certain tanks taunting everything taking a bunch of damage and then she being able to restore them to full health i did see uses for this however later on i found it's just better just to kill everything and not take any damage at all <laughs> so i don't really use it anymore i did mess around with blood magic this will have the random effect of applying two mag uh, blood 
Blood Magic, Counter, Fast, or Strengthened. Generally, the only stat you want from this is the Strengthened, and it will draw one of the allies' cards. Putting Apply to Resist, you can mod this to have three Resist. That will make it so you can apply this to a tank, and they're basically going to resist all of their attacks. And if you're lucky, you can also strengthen that tank. So I did find that this could get some value for sure. And your Curse, I've uh, tried this with Quick, and you can use it as a Quick Attack, but then in the case that you roll two Mark or two Vulnerability or two Stun, you could use this in other ways to help help you clear the battlefield, but it will cost you a card play because it won't kill them and it will not trigger the quick effect. With that said, I didn't find I was getting much use out of that either. I just wanted to show you guys that I have messed around with different things in her kit, but I have ultimately decided on what I have currently. So let's show you what that is. Starting from the core, her, I guess, quick attack, in the, in the case that I've made it a quick attack, you have to run at least one attack card in your deck. That is the rule when building a deck for a hero. So you have to roll a, uh, an attack card. So in the case you can roll, you could use Curse, which I've done in the past and I showed you guys that, or you could run Blood for Blood. And I re the reason I leaned into Blood for Blood is because it does 208 damage where Curse only does 60 damage. While this doesn't have the nice effect of possibly being able to stun them or vulnerability or mark those are two rng and you cannot rely on them to get what you want out of them and at the very least if an enemy has 200 health left this will kill him and refund the card play so i just look at this as more damage is better and it has the bonus effect that it will heal one of your allies if it does kill them so for me blood for blood is the better choice of the one attack card that you're forced to roll in her deck uh, we're going to skip ahead to Empower before we talk about the other stuff because I felt like this is the best card that Nico has. Uh, whether you're new into the game, you're in the mid game or whatever, this is just a great card in general. By default, this does not generate heroism. So I have modded this card to be plus two heroism. It is a bit odd that it doesn't generate heroism, but I guess the cat card itself is so powerful that the developers decided against it. But generally the rule is it's free cards that don't generate heroism this card is not free it will cost you a card play but it will draw a heroic card it will change the cost of all heroic cards in your hand to zero until the end of turn so what this also means is if you draw more heroic cards after using this they will come into your hand at zero cost basically all heroics cost zero for this turn that's how they should have worded it this is insanely powerful because obviously you can go on a heroic kill killing spree without the need of having any heroism built up. Um, there is an exception to the rule though, certain cards like Crack in the Sky will do damage based on how much heroism you currently have. So you will still need to build up your heroism and going into the next turn, this effect will no longer be there. So you will still need heroism to play whatever remaining cards are in your hand because their, their cost will not stay at zero. They'll go back up to normal cost. So it's still important to generate generate heroism even if you're playing in, in power and that is why I went with the plus two heroism mod on this card because this is one of the cards that you cannot roll free on because it draws cards draw card cards cannot go free so that is a bit unfortunate if you could make this free this would be a very powerful and very broken card because it does cost you a card play you're only going to have two card plays remaining and unless they're marked or something like that you won't you know you won't be able to play those and get the card play refunded unless they have quick or there's marked enemies and if you're running her as a support there's a chance you're not running other supports that's why i was talking about the uh the witch's storm being able to mark enemies would enable you to get some of those card play refunds and i thought that might be a nice option for her which it definitely can be so for me this is one of the most powerful abilities that she brings to the table it's reliable there's no roulette rng mechanic involved in this it's just good and it does go against the rules of the staff of one because there's a good chance you're going to play this on your first turn and possibly play it on your second turn <laughs> and and even so on so yeah it does break the rules of the staff of one hence what i was saying at the top of the video i think the design choice should have been slightly different but that's what it is so let's talk about double up 
Uh, I wasn't using this at first in my deck, and then as I was trying to refine her a little bit more, I decided that this is actually kind of broken if used in combination with in power. However, this will generate a copy of each attack, skill, or heroic in your hand, but it's selected randomly when drawn, so it does have the roulette mechanic. In most cases, you want this to roll the ability to duplicate your heroic cards, and that's what you're aiming for. So you can see the mod I have on this is plus two redraws. I also have it here, two of them, with plus two heroism. So this generates four heroism, this generates four heroism. I've tried that route. That is also a good option, and I think it's going to depend on your team composition. So I actually recommend having a set of two, a set of plus two redraws, and a set of plus two heroism. As I mentioned, you still want to build your heroism all the way up to 10 so that she can fully play her crack in the sky properly. However, in the case that you say use this and you do dope duplicate your heroic cards in your hand and they're all played for free within power, if you start drawing more empowers or more double ups you kind of don't want them in your hand anymore because you've already played their effect on this turn you kind of want to get rid of them so having those plus two draws lets you redraw more cards or in the case that you get a uh, a roulette mechanic on swarm and it procs its lowest amount of damage you want to also get rid of it so one thing that nico lacks with is when rng is not in your favor you have to use redraws to hope for a better roll or a different card or another option so i found having additional redraws is important which also means she can often pair up well with iron man because iron man generates card redraws just wanted to add that in but in the case that you draw double up and you can duplicate attack cards you could duplicate some amazing attack cards throughout your other heroes on your team some of the heroes on your team have amazing attack cards and some characters like dr strange have some of the best skill cards it doesn't hurt to duplicate an astral meditation in your hand allowing you to use an exhaust card even more times where whichever this rolls on whether it be attack skill or heroic you're probably going to find some use in this you just have to determine is it worth the card play because you cannot roll free on this because it generates cards it's basically draw card so you're going to pay the price but you're hopefully going to get a good return on your investment in the case that it rolls heroic and you get to duplicate all your heroics in your hand yeah the sky's the limit she becomes an s tier hero absolutely because you could duplicate your crack in the sky you could duplicate any legendary card that's in your hand from any of your other heroes which often leads you to clearing the entire map in a single turn because some of these legendaries are so devastating such as hulk's world breaker you can have two of those in your hand which is crazy because the first one will fill up his rage and the second one will be at full rage you will just beat the mission right then and there. Yeah, this really enables a lot of crazy options if RNG's on your side. Which leads us to our crack in the sky discussion. It will consume all heroism to damage random enemies, one for each heroism spent, and you gain one heroism for each KO. And I've applied the one, apply one mark as the mod for this. Why? Because it's hitting all of the enemies once, and then that means everyone on the battlefield is going to be marked. And if it hits all the enemies and hits them a second time and kills them, the first application applied the mark and the second hit killed them and that means oftentimes you get to play crack in the sky and it refunds the card play that is absolutely amazing another option you could go for this is increasing its damage if you want so that it just does 50 percent more damage but i find that uh it, it does quite a bit of damage on its own now the nice thing is if you've played in power it will not consume all the heroism however you will need to be at 10 heroism for it to use its full effect hence why i was saying that double up giving plus two heroism is a good option having empower with plus two heroism is a good option because we want to build up our heroism so that we are at 10 when we use crack in the sky and in the case that we used in power it will use 10 heroism's worth of power in terms of damage but it will not consume the 10 heroism and even if it did you will gain some of that heroism back for each enemy that it ko's in the case that you didn't get to play in power um so crack in the sky i found that in 
most cases that I use this at 10 heroism, I've always gotten good value out of it and it does take out a lot of the enemies and it often even refunds its card play when you mod it with the uh, apply one mark. And last but not least, we have Swarm. So there's a debate where you can go the other route that I showed with Witch's Storm, applying one mark, allowing her to be a mark support, and she's doing a little area of marking a bunch of enemies in that area. But I found that Swarm with Quick is more reliable because you can use this to take out a minion, which with Quick, it will refund its cost. And if this roulette rolls 420 damage, that's actually a significant amount of damage. And there's things that you can do with this, especially playing with Doctor Strange. You can buff this with uh, his abilities to increase the amount of damage that Swarm's doing. And you can even use combat items to strengthen her or overpower her. And Doctor Strange can refund those combat items with his abilities like Astral Meditation. So you can actually increase the potential of Swarm's damage up to 800 damage if you really wanted to. Meaning that this can take out large enemies and because it has quick, it will refund the card play. And what you can also have is running battle items that uh, she will draw cards when she KOs enemies, making this basically a draw card on KO and it refunds the card play. So that is also an option. I'm not crazy about this, but I felt it was like the best route that I needed to go on her because you can only run four skill cards and we have two double ups, two empowers. But I did find that it does big single target damage when it rolls high with strengthened, empowered, overpowered, and that sort of thing. It will often kill the enemy and refund refund the card play so it does allow her to pick off enemies so i don't mind this one but there are there is an argument to be said where there are other things that you could put in its place so if we head on over to the forge we can take a look at her other abilities and talk about those so we briefly talked about blood magic here so this card it is a skill card so it would take the place of empower or it would take the place of double up and I don't really like that considering it's going to cost you a card play. You cannot make it free because it will draw a card. So I just don't see much use for the blood magic. We talked about curse briefly as well. Uh, it has the ability to apply two stun, two mark vulnerability or two weak. And that makes it extremely unreliable. You don't know which one you're going to get. And it is not a quick attack card. In fact, Nico's probably one of the only characters in the game, her and Hulk, who do not have a quick attack card by default. So I wish that this had quick on it by default default and then we could modify it further to do something better but that's not the case so I don't see much value out of this card either. We talked about restore there's definitely an argument to be said to have one of these in your deck but again it is a skill card so it will take the place of double up or empower and I just think those cards are too good to replace with a restore. And Witchfire is an interesting one we didn't talk about this yet. Damage a random enemy on KO it will recast the card and it does it to a maximum of three times. This is super unreliable because it will target a random enemy and if it just hits a big guy it just ends there it just did 200 damage for your card play you could probably mod this to be quick but even if it hits a big enemy and it doesn't kill them you will not get the card play refunded so even with quick on this card it's still unreliable in the case that it kills a minion and it hits another minion and then another minion yeah you're killing three minions but generally you want to use minions as card draw mechanics you want to knock at minions into your allies to draw more cards you want to kill them with quick attack cards that draw more or cards so minions are actually a resource that you should be utilizing on the battlefield so anything that the witch fire would have killed normally um, would have been a good opportunity to utilize uh, in terms of a draw card mechanic so i really think this is just an awful card absolutely awful and that's pretty much all of her other abilities so let's talk about who she pairs up with on the, the best on teams. Because of her empower ability, you pa she pairs really well with characters that have tons and tons of heroism cost, like the Hall. These are very expensive, lots of heroism. With empower, they all cost zero. So she pairs well with characters that have the big heroism tanks. But oddly enough, she pairs really well with Doctor Strange because of her ability to duplicate skill cards, duplicate uh, heroic cards. If we duplicate all of our... Uh, astral meditations our agumoto's gaze our blessings of ashanti or even our seven sons of cinnabus we can get some in crazy results out of pairing her with dr strange and in the case that we want to really use a lot of battle items to make nico up to par and actually a strong damage dealer we're gonna need uh the, to use battle items to do that and dr strange using astral meditation will restore those battle items oddly enough if you focus on using the build that i have here with nico even though 
it doesn't seem like she's doing a bunch of damage, her swarms, her crack in the sky, and her blood for blood, once empowered with battle items, using overpower and strengthened, she does a lot of damage. So she will become the main DPS of a group and also be supporting the group. Therefore, she pairs well with Doctor Strange being a support. And my hunter, I play as half support and half DPS. These being big heroism costing cards that will now be free. These drawing last attacks and, and that sort of thing, generating more heroism. And, and she does a lot of damage, but she also adds a lot of support. One of the most fun builds for me is basically running hunter support, strange support, and Nico support. And I end up clearing the map in one turn sometimes if RNG's on my favor with Nico. But again, she pairs well with characters that have a lot of heroism cost, mainly that of the Hulk. Yeah, for me, that's generally what I run. I run Nico and Hulk and Nico and Strange, and I don't really run her with anyone else, unfortunately. Those are my two best recommendations for Nico. And that is why she's only level eight, because I just often find that there's so many other team compositions that I prefer, but that's okay. In this series, I talk about combat items as well. Overdrive Serum is good on Nico before you play in power. Once you play in power, Overdrive Serum has no effect because you gain heroism to the cost of all the heroic cards in your hand. If they're all set to zero, you will gain no heroism. So if you pop this before using Empower, you'll at least have full heroism and that will empower things like her legendary card. What I really like is the Major Strength Tonic because it overpowered doubles her offense, 100% more offense. And you can also get the uh, Strengthened Tonic as well. So she does 150% more damage. Now your Swarms, your Blood Magic, all of those abilities, her Crack in the Sky, they're hitting for 150% more. However, you're using these combat items and um, these ones you have to craft at the Cauldron, which are resources that you have to gather at the Abbey. Therefore, she pa pairs really well with Doctor Strange, in my opinion. And because there are times where Nico draws a card that you do not like, having redraws to get rid of them or to fish for better rolls on your roulette, gain three redraws is often a good battle item and it's cheap to craft. So yeah, there's, there's definitely an argument to be made that she pairs okay with Iron Man as well because Iron Man can mark and he can bring a lot of damage to the table as well. And he also offers redraws for Nico. So those are my battle item recommendations. Those are who I think she pairs best with. And that is my overall build for Nico. What did you guys think? I think there's a lot of different things you can do with Nico. There's different ways you can go with her. There's different alterations you can make to this build, but this is ultimately what I found to be the most effective. And at times when the stars align, she has cleared the entire map and done some pretty amazing stuff. She can often be really fun, but also a bit of a dud. So I tried to make the most out of her kit in the way that it is currently. And I'd love to know how you guys play Nico. Do you have something that I didn't think of yet? Love to hear your thoughts. So fire away down in the comments below. If you guys found this video helpful or informative anyway, please do leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to check the links in the description below. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next Midnight Suns video. Bye now.